डॉक्टर जी जी गुड इवनिंग ऑल द टॉपिक ऑफ टुडे इज वाट्स पर्सन एंड इज मैनेजमेंट इन सबर हेमरेज सो कमिंग टू वाट्स पर्सन पोस्ट हेमरेजिक सर्बल वाट्स पर्सन इज सीन इन एंजियोग्राफिकली इन सिक्सटी टू सेवेंटी पर्सेंट ऑफ ऑल एस एच एंड इट इज क्लिनिकली सीन इन uh half of them and it usually start uh, from the fourth day of the illness uh, can appear up to 14 days of the uh, arachnoid hemorrhage yes sir yeah so uh post hemorrhagic cerebral vascular spasm is seen in 60 to 70% of the subarachnoid hemorrhage angiographically and clinically seen in half of uh, the and it usually start from the fourth to uh, fourth day of illness it can appear up to 14th day of uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage it can cause infarction or death in one third of, of Uh, cases uh, which is uh, having vascular spasm the pathogenesis is not still clear and treatment are in evolution so the concept of delayed cerebral ischemia is the occurrence of uh, focal neurological deficits uh, which is characterized by either hemiparesis aphasia apraxia etc and associated or associated with decrease in at least two points in the glasgow coma scale which is lasting for at least 1 hour and it is not seen immediately after after the aneurysm occlusion and uh, it cannot be caused to due to other causes after appropriate clinical assessment imaging and laboratory studies vascular spasm is the most important cause of delayed cerebral ischemia following subarachnoid hemorrhage the other mechanism of uh, 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 the delayed cerebral ischemia include uh, the cerebral uh, the cortical spreading depressions uh, the endothelial dysfunctions uh, and procoagulant activity inflammation and necrosis all these can contribute to uh, the uh, delayed cerebral ischemia following subarachnoid hemorrhage the mechanism proposed uh, for vascular spasm include the blood once the blood is uh, formed in the subarachnoid space it is degraded the hemoglobin is degraded into its components like oxyhemoglobin which is a potent vasoconstrictor and thereafter the lipid peroxidation of the blood occurs and uh, releases the superoxide uh, in radicals which is causing an inflammatory cascade and uh, there is formation of uh, endothelins and reduction of uh, this nitric oxide which leads to a cycle of uh, vascular spasm reactions this is a proposed mechanism of vascular spasm in subarachnoid hemorrhage and it can be pathologically correlated in, by a sub intimal cellular proliferation and necrosis collagen deposition and myo myofibro fibroblast proliferation micro thrombi and micro embolism and decreased micro regional microcirculation and failure of auto regulation so how we diagnose a vascular spasm it, it is characterized by new sudden onset in uh, mentation of the patient uh, which, which is usually occurring in the fourth to 10th day of uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage and onset of new neurological deficits like loss of consciousness numbness confusion dizziness uh, worsening of headache mood changes blurring of vision etc so once we have doubt of vascular spasm it should be confirmed uh, other causes should be ruled out like hyponatremia hypoglycemia etc and counts and procalcitonin should be uh, done to rule out sepsis and transcranial doppler has been emerged as a routine monitoring tool for evaluation of bedside evaluation of vascular spasm it should be routinely done in all subarachnoid hemorrhage from starting from day 1 and if the patient the, Uh, uh, if the patient uh, has de uh, developed a new onset deficit, 
a plain CT brain should be done to exclude other causes like hydrocephalus or new infarct, etc. And if the uh, comatose coma patient uh, developed a neurological deficit, advanced imaging such as uh, CT and your uh, CT perfusion or diffusion weighted MRI or DSA can be done. So, what are the risk factors of vasospasm in subarachnoid hemorrhage? The most important risk factor is the grade of subarachnoid hemorrhage, uh, which is uh, denoted by the modifier Fisher scaling. Uh, higher the grade, higher the risk of subarachnoid hemorrhage. Uh, it is mostly seen in grade 3 and grade 4 of uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage. So, other risk factors include uh, the thick uh, 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 subarachnoid clots, which is uh, seen in higher grades, interventricular hematoma. And persistent subarachnoid clots, which are slow, which are slowly cleared, and poor neurological condition on admission, low loss of consciousness associated with the rupture of aneurysm, history of cigarette smoking, pre-existing hypertension, diabetes mellitus, and cocaine use. These are all associated with the uh, increased risk of vasospasm. So, uh, other than vasospasm, we, uh, the other causes of delayed deterioration of, after subarachnoid hemorrhage include increased edema around the hematomas, conduction, re bleeding of aneurysm, hydrocephalus, infection, including ventriculitis, hyponatremia, hypoxia, and cortical spreading depression. So, TCD, transcranial Doppler, has emerged as a uh, powerful monitoring tool for uh, detecting vasospasm in the earlier stage. If the velocity in the middle cerebral artery more than 120 centimeter per second can in denote vasospasm, development of vasospasm, and velocity is more than 200 is, uh, uh, is equivalent with the severe vasospasm. But uh, these uh, transcranial velocities can be influenced by the uh, various pressure changes and blood flow. So a Lindigrad ratio, which is the ratio of velocities of um, MCA upon uh, inter uh, ICA, more than three, which uh, uh, de uh, denotes a uh, significant vasospasm. But the TCD uh, disadvantage is that it is not able to detect uh, vasospasm at the peripheral branches. So, uh, in that case, uh, the diagnosis of angiography uh, uh, vasospasm can be made with the DSA or CT angiography. The vasospasm can be divided into focal or diffuse vasospasm. And the angiographical grading can be uh, done with the mild when the vasospasm grade is less than 25, moderate when the vasospasm is between 25 and 50, and severe when the narrowing is more than 50%. Coming to treatment modalities in vasospasm, the uh, initial uh, consideration up to uh, re uh, till, uh, recent years was the tri triple H therapy was the initial treatment of vasospasm. Uh, uh, the in the um, the triplex therapy which is uh, hemolution um, hyper uh, hypervolemia and hypertension therapy was based on the uh, poisonous equation where uh, the changes in pressure is directly related to the uh, uh, related to the volume and uh, uh, the uh, also related to the viscosity so thereby re reducing the viscosity by hemodilution and increasing the volume by hypodynamic uh, uh, hypodynamicity uh, can hyper uh, volemia can uh, can increase to the um, pressure changes and thereby reducing vasospasm. This was the basis of uh, triple, triple H therapy. But uh, there is a limit uh, in which uh, how these parameters can be modified. Uh, and the, the, uh, therefore, uh, uh, the triple H therapy is no, no longer being considered as the adequ adequate therapy for uh, treatment of vasospasm uh, because of the side effect, uh, significant effort, uh, uh, occurrence of side effects like pulmonary edema, uh, hyponatremia, and myocardial infarction. So, uh, this is a result of a uh, random, uh, 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 randomized uh, studies which favors uh, treatment against the uh, uh, triple H therapy. And uh, the various studies also uh, showed that the uh, hemodilution uh, decreases the global cere cerebral blood flow uh, and uh, oxygen delivery. So, uh, so, uh, hypertension, that is hemodynamic augmentation, is the first line 
ട്രീറ്റ്മെന്റ് ഓഫ് ട്രീറ്റ്മെന്റ് ഓഫ് സിംറ്റമാറ്റിക് വാസസ് പാസ് ദ വോളിയം ഷുഡ് ബി മെയിൻറ്റൈൻഡ് യൂസിംഗ് ഐസോട്രോണിക് ക്രിസ്റ്റലോയിഡ്സ് ടാർഗറ്റിംഗ് യു വോളിമിയ ദാൻ ഹൈപ്പർ വോളിമിയ ദ സിസ്റ്റമിക് ബി പി ക്യാൻ ബി ഇൻക്രീസ് അപ് ടു വൺ സിക്സ്റ്റി ടു ടു ട്വന്റി ബേസ്ഡ് ഓൺ ദി ബേസ് ലൈൻ ബ്ലഡ് പ്രഷർ ആൻഡ് ദി ക്യാരക്ടറിസ്റ്റിക്സ് ഓഫ് പേഷ്യൻറ്റ് Uh, and uh, once uh, these measures are started then the rescue therapy can be uh, done using either endovascular uh, arterial treatment or angioplasty and cardiac output augmentation uh, can be done and hemoglobin optimization uh, can be done and uh, this uh, the treatment like therapeutic hypothermia uh, intrathecal vasodilators hypertonic saline aortic flow diversion and intra aortic balloon pump are done in research centers only and their role is still yet, yet to be investigated so what what do the guidelines say for the prevention of vasopressin uh, the oral administration of nemodipine maintenance of u volume normal circulating blood volume are recommended by american heart association and american stroke association uh, as class 1 evidence for prevention of vasopressin the intra venous administration of fasodil hydrochloride or osagril sodium and cisternal dynamite was seen japanese guidelines uh, and uh, once the delayed cerebral ischemia is diagnosed there is uh, the induction of hypertension not triple h therapy is recommended in american heart association drop association as pass on evidence uh, coming to nemodipine nemodipine is available in oral and uh, iv formulation it is a dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers which readily crosses the red blood vein barrier and in animal studies it has shown to increase the cerebral blood flow preventing the vasoconstriction attributable to sympathetic stimulation hypocapnia and hypertension and improving the neurological outcome after cerebral ischemia it is 90% protein bound and half life is around 13 hours the original uh, rationale of use of nemodipine was to reduce the vasospasm by blocking the calcium influx to the vascular smooth muscle but there was no clear effect on the angiographic vasospasm despite improvement in the functional outcome thus the mechanism of ac- action remains controversial but it is attributed due to directive uh, direct neuroprotective effects so uh, but uh, nicod uh, nicodipine a calcium channel blocker with a similar mechanism of action uh, demonstrated angiographic vasum improvement but did not uh, demonstrated improvement in the fu- functional outcome so nimodipine remains only drug associated with the improved outcome after many studies so what is the recommendation of nimodipine for every patient presenting with the subarachnoid uh, uh, hemorrhage nimodipine 60 mg should be given by mouth or uh, rice tube every four hours <coughs> and we should be started within 96 hours of the presumed onset aneurysmal sh and continued for 21 days iv nimodipine uh, can be given by central venous catheter starting at a dose of 1 mg per hour which is 15 microgram per kg per uh, kg per hour um, equal to 5 ml power for the initial 2 hours if the patient is tolerating that uh, and patient has no hypotension the dose can be increased to, to 2 yes. mg per hour that is 30 microgram per, per hour after first, that is 10 ml per hour if the patient is already okay i told you hello hello go over informative for all സോ a treatment with iv nimodipine should should be started as soon as possible with the uh, onset of vasus spasm and should be continued for a minimum of 5 days and maximum of 14 days the administration of iv nimodipine can be done with or without the pre treatment with the tablet form but if given uh, uh, do, uh, during uh, uh, the under, uh, during uh, following oral administration the total duration should not exceed maximum of 21 days
I mean, nimodipin should not be given for more than 14 days. And, and in addition, patients should not take in th- both forms concomitantly. Coming to mildenone, mildenone is a phosphodiesterase 3 inhibitor. It acts by uh, uh, increasing the cyclic AMV in the cytosol of vascular smooth muscle and cardiac myositis. myositis. It has a vasodilatory property, uh, ionotropic. Uh, property and it is also having multiple uh, mode of action like uh, decreasing ac- action of neutrophil uh, lactase, uh, reduced apoptotic s- signaling and reduced platelet aggregation and in- inflammation. So, Mildredone, after many sy- systematic review, has been found as only, only low quality evidence uh, for using uh, the patient with a subarachnoid hemorrhage and further research uh, is needed for using its use in subarachnoid hemorrhage. There was a Montreal Neurological Hospital protocol for treatment with mildenone in subarachnoid hemorrhage. Uh, it start with uh, basically a um, bolus dose of 0.1 to 0.2 milligram uh, uh, bolus for, followed by 0.75 microgram per, uh, per minute infusion. And if the um, BP for, for, uh, for, for fall, uh, then start norepinephrine to maintain the mean arterial pressure. If there is no improvement after milliliter infusion uh, of 30 minutes, the increase in infusion rate to 1.25 microgram per kg mint and <coughs> start norepinephrine to maintain mean arterial blood pressure more than 90. If there is no improvement, even with the higher dose, then plan for emergency angiogram and treatment uh, uh, using intraarterial or angioplastic treatment. So, uh, feasible milrinone protocol was, is used in many institutions uh, to start milrinone after maintaining a central venous uh, pressure of more than 6 and avoid hypoglycemia. A starting dose of 0.5 to 0.75 microgram per infusion can be, st- uh, be uh, started and uh, keep MAP more than 90. And uh, no improvement occurs the, uh, after 30 minutes, increase to 1.25 microgram. And if no improvement again after 130 minutes, then plan for uh, angiography and uh, endovascular treatment. So, uh, t- uh, this uh, in- milrinone can be diluted. Uh, the 10 ml contains uh, 10 milligram uh, can be diluted with uh, uh, 40 ml of saline to form a uh, 1 milligram in 5 ml of solution. And the uh, usually, uh, if in a 50 patient uh, kilogram patient, uh, point, uh, the, the, the infusion rate can be between 7.5 to 18 point, uh, 18.75 ml per hour, which correspond to 0. 0.5 to uh, 1.25 microgram per. Uh, per kg per mint solution. So this is a summary of various uh, chemical agents which is used for uh, uh, this cerebral uh, uh, vasa spasm. Uh, it can be seen that the nimodipin, uh, even though uh, which is angiographically not showing much benefit, the, the functional improvement is shown in many studies. Whereas nicardipin uh, showed uh, angiographically better uh, better improvement, but clinical or, or, uh, improvement is less. The uh, classosendan, which was which is an endothelian uh, uh, one egg, uh, antagonist, which was shown to have increased imp- improvement in angiographically, uh, uh, but there was no clinical improvement. Magnesium was also studied in various studies. Uh, the, although the improve, uh, the clinical outcome was uh, uh, not favoring. Uh, there are many studies uh, with statins, aspirin, enoxaparin, and etyl uh, uh, So um, all of these studies showing no improvement. Uh, um, yeah. So nimodipin was the only agent which was shown to have uh, clinical improvement in most studies. So, coming to endovascular treatment, endovascular treatment is reasonable in patient with uh, delayed cerebral ischemia that is refractory to other um, recommended medical therapies. So, endovascular treatment include intraarterial infusion of vasodilators and transluminal balloon angioplasty. So, first uh, pharmacological agent which was used to was uh, papaverin. Papaverin act by inhibiting cyclic GMP and 
cyclic AMV. Uh, but the problem was uh, it it also dilate the venous system the, and it produces uh -huh. raised ICT and session and a lot of problems. <laughs> uh, the, uh, so power is uh, not used to uh, assay. Uh, was a spasmolytic uh, So, various other agents which are used are interacted nimodipine, nicardipine, verapamine, etc. Nimodipine has been showed in various studies as 43 percent improvement in angiographic spasm and 72 percent improvement in clinical outcome. Uh, in the uh, nimodipine shows dilation and arterial level and also neuroprotective action. In, whereas nicardipine was found to have angiographic improvement in all the patients in various series, but the clinical uh, improvement was she, uh, seen in um, uh, not all of them. So how we uh, installed uh, the drugs? A diagnostic cerebral catheter should be uh, inserted to the uh, ICO or the uh, vertebral artery and uh, a dose of 10 milligram uh, should be prepared after dilution with 50 ml saline to obtain a 10 percent solution various uh, the nimodipine should be uh, administrated as a infusion over 20 uh, or 20 to 40 minutes through a micro catheter placed in the affected vessel and uh, the post uh, angiograph should be performed uh, uh, 10 to 30 minutes after each section the dose of nimodipine which was in infused was 1 to 3 milligram per treated vessel and the total dose was infused uh, for a given patient was maintained within 5 milligram. Uh, for unilateral um, procedures of asaswasam, uh, the interactive infusion of nimodipine was 1 to 3 and bilateral procedures, uh, nimodipine 3 was infused to the more severe side and 2, was, uh, 2 milligram was infused to less severe side. Coming to intraarterial mild node, uh, usually 8 milligram infusion uh, was given over 30 minutes to the main artery dedicated to vasospastic uh, territory. It can be repeated in the same territory if incomplete reversal was observed. Intraarterial milnone could be repeated in a different territory uh, in a situation of extensive vasospasm, but the maximum milnone dose was 24 milligram. It should be continued with a IV, uh, IV infusion. Verapamil is also a calcium channel blocker which is used uh, intraarterially, but optimal dose is, uh, is also remaining in question. Uh, usually, various studies show infusion of 2 to 30 milligram per vessel per segment, uh, and uh, various studies showed th these doses can be effective in increasing the vessel diameter. Nicardipine is a, uh, also a calcium channel blocker which acts uh, act more selectively on vascular smooth, smooth muscles and uh, dose uh, uh, was infusion dose was 0.15 milligram per kg per hour and uh, um, yeah, the um, prophylaxis dose uh, can be uh, tried after 0 0.0 half of this dose uh, was also evaluated and found, found to be effective uh, the various studies uh, showed that the uh, dose of nicardipine to be infused was 2 to 10 milligram in each vascular tertiaries with a concentration of 0.1 mg per ml. Uh, uh, various complications were uh, associated with the infusion like uh, hypertension, pulmonary edema and renal dysfunction. Uh, there are uh, few studies showing the efficacy of nicardipine uh, particles which is, uh, uh, which is available as implants which is uh, you, uh, which is intraventricularly administrated. Fasudil is used in Japan, uh, which is an inhibitor of uh, raw, raw, raw kinase uh, pathway, which act by reducing smooth muscle cell contraction and vasospasm, which is specific for cerebral arteries, and uh, also inhibit the action of intracellular calcium uh, ions. And in Japan, it is uh, intraarterial fasudil hydrochloride has been the standard therapy for treating vasospasm and uh, convulsion is found as a side effect and it is not uh, approved by FDA or European medicines. And uh, infusion, constant pump infusion is, uh, is uh, to be given. And uh, if infusion rate is less than 30 milligram per minute, then there is less chance of convulsion. And uh, um, it should be 
at a total of 15 to 30 mg fasodil uh, hydrochloride should be uh, injected intraarterially uh, to the, uh, do, with a infusion pump and the repeated doses are needed this is a summary of uh, various uh, chemical agents which is used in chemical angioplasty uh, the various studies shows the effect uh, effect of this uh, nimodipine and verapami uh, nicodipine uh, <coughs> so uh, the st various studies or various uh, result and repeated procedures are uh, required with these medicines uh, unlike the angioplasty and uh, um, nimodipine uh, shows better clinical uh, result even though the radio radiological outcome is not uh, not much and the problem with the, uh, the main problem is uh, uh, hypotension and uh, no randomized controlled studies are available comparing the efficacy of all these drugs so uh, summary of uh, this medicines again um, papaverin is not uh, now used nimodipine um, verapamil nicodipine mildrinone are used uh, colforcin is also an adrenal cyclase uh, stimulator but it is not used magnesium is also uh, also uh, not found to be uh, clinically effective so coming to uh, transluminal balloon angioplasty Uh, usually trans balloon angioplasty is used for relieving of large artery spasm uh, for uh, vessels more than 1.5 mm uh, compared to uh, the chemical angioplasty the effect by uh, uh, the balloon angioplasty is more sustained and there is no uh, need for repeated treatment but it is associated with the complication like uh, uh, rupture dissection uh, uh, occlusion uh, hemorrhagic transformation tree bleed etc it was first described by uh, uh, sukarab uh, in 1984 usually it is done under ga uh, dedicated neuro balloons like hyper hyperglide and hyperforms are used and uh, <coughs> undersized angioplasty balloons can be also used uh, the main vessel which is uh, which can be uh, tried are ica mca uh, the m1 and m2 segments a1 segment of aca vertebral artery basal artery and p1 and p2 of pca and the all this depend on the uh, skill of the uh, in, uh, interventionist and there are the risk uh, associated and cost and uh, uh, and uh, uh, distal vessels are uh, less amenable to uh, angioplasty uh, transluminal so how um, how we do endovascular procedure uh, the inflation rate uh, which is targeting the 80% of the normal arterial diameter is adequate Uh, uh, diameter distance between the proximal and distal arteries may requ require uh, uh, inflation of increasing pressures with the uh, same balloon uh, starting from a distal segment and proceeding to a po proximal segment by a stepwise inflation deflation and retraction of balloon catheter after the catheter is adequately repositioned proximally the cycle of inflation deflation and repositioning is repeated Uh, if there is a mit uh, large mismatch between the diameter of distal and proximal arteries, then uh, changing a balloon catheter of larger size may be required. Uh, over inflation is uh, less con uh, less a consider for uh, for interaction for complaint balloons because their radial force is low and there is less chance of arterial injury. The same balloon can be started distally and retracted proximally in manner. During the procedure, careful uh, review of angiography images to visualize the site of balloon angioplasty and distal position of the guided catheter are very important to avoid uh, dissections. If there is a dissection and it is flow limiting, uh, the stent placement may be necessary. So these are uh, both uh, the combined balloons, which are hyperglide and hyperform balloons, and uh, the Maverick and Gateway are the non-combined balloons, which is used in transluminal angioplasty. the uh, the non compliant balloons uh, the, there is a linear relation of, um, of the balloon dilation with the pressure uh, and where, uh, in compliant balloons uh, the uh, the pr pressure uh, and the dilation is uh, variable so what are the advantages and uh, advantages and disadvantages of using compliant balloons uh, the compliant balloons are uh, easily uh, placed in small torches vessels and less traumatic and soft and they use uh, softer wires which is also lesser traumatic and it can be inflated and deflated repeatedly uh, since it deflates completely 
uh, with gentle and slow pressure inflation the balloon gently teases open the vessels and uh, uh, single lumen balloons uh, like hyperglide and hyperform can be deflated quickly and easily by withdrawing the wire Uh, the limitation is that uh, the diameter of the uh, balloon varies with the amount of inflation and over in dilation and uh, rupture uh, are greater threats than non compliance balloons and uh, uh, it require multi multiple inflation to adequately dilate a tar uh, target vessel uh, and uh, low pressure balloon will not adequately open uh, if uh, if uh, not adequately Uh, inflated whereas non compliant balloons are um, if adi- uh, if adi- uh, appropriately sized uh, uh, balloons are taken there will be less likelihood uh, likelihood of, of over dilation and they are uh, used with the 0.01 uh, one, one inch microwire uh, and this will provide a more torqueability and support uh, than the smaller wires which is used with the compliant balloons uh, and um, they are difficult to navigate in small distal vessels so uh, angiography angioplasty is limited to large proximal vessels uh, and here there is less chance of this, uh, this uh, problems and uh, uh, these non compliant balloons are heavier but bulkier and more rigid than the compliant balloons and then they require microwires uh, which is heavier and co- causing more chance of vessel injury and uh, this is a summary of various uh, um, angioplasty agents which is uh, which is all studies uh, which is uh, showing a angiographic improvement and clinical improvement uh, ranging from 61 to 30 31% 31%. so uh, early intervention is better and uh, this uh, balloon angioplasty ha- can have serious complication like vessel rupture uh, dissection thrombombolism etc Uh, rupture can range from 0 to 7% and uh, or averaging 1 1% and overall uh, this risk you can happen in 5% of cases uh, this is a chart comparing this uh, transluminal versus intraarterial infusion therapy the transluminal balloon angioplasty causes the paralytic injury in the uh, skeletal smooth muscles uh, and uh, preventing vasoconstriction which is indicated for large artery spasm Uh, in the uh, in the circle of illis or proximal uh, when there is uh, more than 50% reduction in the luminal diameter these are the uh, complications like perforation atrial dissection occlusion and uh, um, displacement of aneurysm clits can be also seen uh, uh, and uh, it is associated with the uh, 82 to 100% of angiographic improvement and clinical improvement is in can be seen in 31 to 77% whereas intraarterial is uh, intraarterial uh, vasodilator therapy is reversible uh, because of the contractile uh, 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 which uh, causes uh, relaxation and vasodilation and it can be used in uh, small uh, small arteries and uh, of any size and any any degree of vasospasm can be treated with uh, drug therapy uh, these are the side effect, side effects of each each drugs and uh, uh, angiographic can, can improvement can be seen into 16 to 90% and clinical improvement is somewhat lesser than that of this uh, balloon angioplasty so uh, coming to a new device uh, the common common c was uh, initially approved for temporary coil embolization assistant and uh, has been recently uh, been approved for the treatment of distal uh, trans uh, symptomatic refractory vasus vasum this is a common c uh, stent uh, assisted coiling device uh, it's a small video how uh, it is used for treating uh, vasus spasm um, it is controlled by hand device and uh, once vasus spasm occur coiling subperitoneal hemorrhage uh, with the drug therapy it is uh, not uh, not much improved uh, then um, patient and can be mechanical treatment with acumancy uh, the mc was first treated then aca was treated uh, and there was a good, good angiographic improvement uh, 24 hours later and also uh, and uh, treatment was uh, done also in basilar segment again treatment was done and, uh, and distal basilar treatment was also done 
and good angiographic uh, relief of vasus vasum was seen uh, with uh, and uh, and also in uh, ola this was a case uh, where uh, aneurysm was detected later uh, this microaneurysm was treatment uh, treated with uh, flow diverter so this is a la latest update for the treatment endovascular treatment of vasus vasum so coming to summarize uh, i would uh, so the first and foremost step in every aneurysm is the early repair and maintenance of uvolemia and oral nemodipin should be the, uh, started in all patients uh, then the patient should avoid hypotension and uh, raised icp should be uh, prevented and once a neurological uh, deterioration occurs the rule out other causes with ischemia like hypoxia hyponatremia hypoglycemia etc ct should be done uh and to look for uh, hydrocephalus and also uh, and it should be complemented with uh, other modes of imaging and once uh, dca is diagnosed uh uvolemia should uh, uh, and in, in the induced hypertension should be uh, done with the uh, hemodynamic augmentation and uh, 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 the uh, milrinone can be uh, given and uh, other forms of iv treatment can be given when there is no improvement with this in the vascular treatment with the balloon angioplasty or uh, arterial vasodilators uh, should be done so, thank you thank you thank you dr thomas that was a excellent exhaustive uh, review of the treatment of uh, spasm uh, very nice thank you very much i may add a few things i think you can exit your uh, stop sharing your screen so that we can have the yes, other screen yeah so uh, gigi can i make some comments yes sir yes, yes sir sir we are waiting for your comments yeah. so i think he has done a very good job he has covered the whole subject very well i may just add a few things so the 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 this delayed cerebral ischemia is also called dind disc delayed ischemic neurological deficit so that's a term which is used by the surgeons dind about the clinical presentation i think the clinical you have to recognize clinically also so patients who are relatively stable start becoming restless start complaining of headache and what is the hallmark of spasm is fluctuation you may you go and see the patient just now he is perfectly well an hour later the patient has a deficit again an hour later the patient may be normal so this clinical i was talking about uh, the clinical uh, presentation so one is the uh, sharp clinical uh, fluctuation patient very good now an hour later worse so one, this should lead one to suspect uh, spasm and uh, tcd is a very useful tool but ideally it should be done by the same person because it is observer dependent the mca may not always be in a straight line the mca may be dipping so in that case the intonation may not be as accurate or as uh, conclusive so it is better if the same person does the the, the same uh, resident radiologist clinician does the tcd every time so you have to have a very high clinical grade of clinical suspicion i think you mentioned most things for a patient to account for the deterioration but rarely you may have subclinical or non convulsive status so we have had patients where we have been confused and we are not sure what is happening might be safer to do an eg to rule out non convulsive status status in some of these patients who are deteriorating fisher grade a lot of stress is laid on the fisher grade and the incidence of spasm but we have seen patients in grade 3 and grade 4 massive subarachnoid hemorrhage thick clots and no spasm right now we have one similar patient in the in the hospital very thick clots and no spasm and you may have other patients who have uh, hardly any just a thin streak of blood in the subarachnoid space and yet a very severe spasm and usually the spasm is on the side of the subarachnoid hemorrhage 
but usually it is more severe on the side of the subarachnoid hemorrhage, but not necessarily. And I have seen patients who come with spasm on one side on day four or day five or day six, they recover from that and at day eight, day nine, they get spasm on the other side. So just because we have treated one side, patient has improved, the patient later deteriorates. Think of spasm on the other side as well. So we have had patients who had uh, sequential spasm on one side, other side and posterior circulation. So this is essentially for the clinical uh, thing. As far as the imaging, we mentioned TCD and uh, the you toss up is between a CTA or an MRA because if you do a CTA or an MRA, you can actually document the spasm before you take the patient up. But uh, the advantage of taking the patient up immediately is that you don't waste time. Um, so that is an advantage. But if you do an MRA, one can see already it's infarcts if they are setting in. On a CTA, it becomes difficult to see whether there are any infarcts. So it depends on what your setup at your hospital is. CTA is easier or uh, MR is easier. In my hospital, for instance, we do a diffusion-related imaging. We see exactly where the infarct is, if there is any, and just do an angio. So you see the spasm and you see the, uh, the effect of the spasm. The... Uh, then we talked about uh, volemia. So I like to keep the CVP around 8 to 9. So usually I like to have a central venous line in these patients. And we try and uh, there's no point in having it in place on day one. Better to put in the central venous line on day four or day five or day six when we suspect that spasm will set in. Because then you cannot leave the central line in for more than seven days. So you have to take it out. So better to insert it in the, on day four, day five, day six, so that you can keep the CVP around say, seven to eight. Seven to nine is what I think we should try and keep it at. We mentioned uh, hypertension. So we try and keep the, in these patients, we try and keep the mean blood pressure around 100. So that uh, mean AP, arterial pressure around 100, so that the cerebral perfusion is maintained. And sometimes there is a very low diastolic and a high systolic. So sometimes you have to go up to 180 to maintain the BP at a high level. Oh yeah, I didn't mention. So maintaining the CVP at a 7 to 9 in these patients can be very difficult. So we give crystalloids, they just pass it out in urine. And it is very difficult to keep chasing the urine output. So in such patients, it is better to give crystalloids. So either we give uh, albumin, sometimes we give albumin 2%, uh, 4%, or sometimes we give, uh, even if the, if the hemoglobin is low, it might be a good idea to give pack cells. Or uh, we usually use this, one of these volume expanders. The disadvantage of volume expander sometimes can be that it can cause uh, hypernatremia. So you don't want hypernatremia either. <coughs> but many of these patients have hyponatremia which needs to be corrected. So colloids may need to be given to maintain the CVP. And I said the blood pressure, we use NORAD. If you use dopamine, with dopamine usually the urine output increases, there is a renal artery dilatation. And keeping the, chasing the output becomes very difficult. So. The preferred drug, at least for us, is uh, noradrenaline. We try and keep the uh, magnesium. Usually, magnesium is low. Though, uh, I think in his review, we had shown that magnesium does not help. But there are anecdotal patients that we have seen where keeping the magnesium are above 2. Usually, we try and keep it around 2.2. So, not only do we monitor the sodium potassium and uh, Chloride, but also the magnesium in all these patients for at least up to two weeks. Uh, then we talked about milnerone. I am not very happy with IV, nimodipine or milnerone because it lowers the blood pressure. So when you lower the blood pressure, almost invariably the cerebral perfusion suffers. 
So at least in our setup, we don't like to use IV. But I'm sure that there are a lot of people who are very fond of using it to good effect. Uh, the surgeons always claim that when they do a craniotomy, they open the subarachnoid space and they thoroughly irrigate the subarachnoid space so that they get rid of the blood. And so they, they see less spasm. Uh, or at least that's what they claim. I remember when I was a resident, any patient with subarachnoid hemorrhage, we used to do a lumbar puncture to drain blood. We don't do that anymore. So I don't know whether draining LP would help reduce the frequency or incidence of spasm. It is just a thought. I think, uh, yeah, one more thing is, uh, you will find a lot of publications about the use of stents and balloons, uh, the, that Komanichi and balloons in the American literature because they do not have access to nimodipin. Nimodipin is not available to them IV. So they use verapamil and uh, the, what is the other drug? Verapamil and nicardipin, which I think uh, are not as effective as nimodipin is or milrinone is for that matter. We have not used intra arterial infusion of milrinone or um, nimodipin, but there are a lot of people who are doing it and they give a continuous infusion for two or three days. What we have been doing is to bring the patient back if, if required, give a second dose of uh, intra arterial nimodipin. We have not had to do it many times, but we have, we have a few patients where we have had to do it two or three times. And at least with nimodipin, we get a very good clinical outcome. And I think he also mentioned uh, papaverin. So in the beginning, in the 90s, I had used papaverin and the artery would be beautifully restored to a normal lumen. But the clinical outcome would never be good. And that he has explained, uh, Thomas explained very nicely in his uh, talk, why that happens. So all in said and done, we know very little about spasm. But we try and treat it as effectively as possible. Over the years, despite everything, occasionally you may have a patient who may deteriorate despite everything. So over the years, I will, we will have lost about three or four patients in the last 30, 40 years that I have been treating patients with spasm aggressively with intra-arterial pneumodipin uh, and intra-arterial uh, earlier uh, Papaverin, like I told you, and later Nimodipin. We have not used the Komanichi ourselves, but Komanichi seems to be the answer to spasm. And what uh, Dr. Uh, Rene Shapo told me the other day was that when he's treating, that Komanichi has, has catch. So you just go one click and open it. So you open it very, very slowly so that the chance of injury to the wall of the artery, endothelium, is, is small. And the chance of a rupture also is very small. Also, if you use an, a compliant balloon, the chance of a rupture is higher. The compliant balloon has less radial force. It is a softer balloon. So it also does not uh, act as effectively as the non-compliant balloon. I think this is all. these are all the notes that I had made. Yeah, so one more thing was, when you inflate the balloon, always inflate balloon under roadmap. Never never inflate on plain fluoroscopy. Always make an, make an outline of the artery, proximal and distal to where the spasm is. And do not go beyond the <coughs> outline of the artery on the roadmap. Okay, thank you very much. I've, I've, I've talked quite a lot. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Justin. I think yes. we'll uh, close the session. Uh, I think we'll put a schedule for the next meetings if uh, all the fellows find it useful. Thank you, sir, for uh, participating and uh, chairing the session as well as giving all the very, very valuable clinical points and uh, advice. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, Gigi, and keep it up. And keep us all yeah. posted about what is the next session and when. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. Yeah. Thank you.